So today we're going to talk about the functions y equals cosecant x and y equals sine x. Okay. So we've talked about sine and cosine and where they come from and how we can graph those. And you need to know those parent functions cold. These you need to know depending on your curriculum. Um, if you're going to be asked, oops, I wrote sine, didn't I? Because uh, I'm trying to think at the same time and I have limited brain power. So uh, these are additional functions. And this function is the reciprocal function of y equals sine x. And this is the reciprocal function of y equals cosine x. In other words, um, cosecant of some angle is equal to 1 over sine of that same angle. And similarly, uh, secant of x is equal to 1 over cosine of that same angle. So let's graph these first. I'm going to graph quickly graph y equals sine x, and then we'll talk about how cosecant is related to uh, that graph. Uh, I want this to be a different color. Maybe we'll go with the hot pink. And so this axis and the other axis, uh, this would be theta or x, and this would be y or, or your height of your function. And so we're going to first plot out the sine function. And so sine looks something like this, right? And it continues on to the right and to the left. This value, that peak is at pi over two. This value is at pi. This trough or least value, uh, least local value is at three pi over two. And this value is at two pi. And of course it continues and repeats. And when we get to four pi, we'll be at this uh, similar point as well because four pi is coterminal angle with two pi. And this point here is zero. Now, how does cosecant relate to that? So here's the whole deal with this. When I'm thinking about um, the cosecant of some angle x, it's always going to be the reciprocal of its reciprocal function, sine x. So right here, I'm going to try to do this with some different colors and then relate to what's happening. Right here, the value for sine of angle zero, so the sine of zero degrees or the sine of zero radians, why did I put a theta thing in there? Zero radians is equal to zero. Fine, we get this point right there inside that orange box. But the cosecant of zero is going to be the reciprocal of sine, which means it's going to be one over the sine of zero radians, which is one over zero. Well, hopefully we recall that one over zero is undefined, which means when I go to plot a point on the cosecant curve, y equals cosecant um, x, when x is zero, I go to plot a point and I can't because I don't have a y value that goes with it. I have an x value, the angle is zero, but I don't have a y value. So you end up getting, remember with um, rational functions, you end up getting an asymptote here. And in fact, you get an asymptote at every value where sine was zero. So it was sine is zero at pi. So there's sine zero, but also cosecant undefined. Here's sine zero, cosecant undefined, okay? So I have these asymptotes. Similarly, I'm gonna erase this stuff in the bottom so we can keep working here. Similarly, Let's get rid of this box, go back to orange. When sine of an angle, let's say pi over two, is equal to one, then cosecant of that same angle, pi over two, is gonna be the reciprocal of sine, which means it's gonna be one over one, which is one. So the cosecant of pi over two, right here, is one. It's the equivalent to sine of pi over two. If I look at the sine of three pi over two, I get negative one, which means the cosecant of three pi over two is one over negative one, which is still just negative one, and I get this point, okay? Now, this gets slightly more complicated, but not greatly so. If we look, at, we could look at it in the unit circle. When I have an angle that's just slightly more than zero, that means I have, I'm gonna blow this up a little bit more. Um, that means I have this guy. 
I have this really skinny, skinny angle here. Initial side, terminal side. So very, very small angle right here. So that's like right here, just past zero, right? Because I'm just opening that up a tiny bit above zero. The length of this, the y, the y leg or the opposite leg is very, very small value. But let's say that it has a height of 0.1. So the sine of this skinny angle, theta or x or whatever, is 0.1. But then the cosecant of that same angle is going to be the reciprocal of that which is 10. So instead of where here I get this little tiny value for the height, for the cosecant, I get a number that's way up here because it's 10. If I was even skinnier or even sh more shallow an angle, so let's say that it's an angle that's even shallower, let's say that it's 1 tenth of the other one, and let's say that it was 0.01, which means the cosecant is the reciprocal, which means I get 100 which means instead of, you know, like if I get really skinny, get close to that asymptote, I get way to heck up there. It's off my screen, right? So one more point. As the angle moves this way, it gets closer and closer and closer to here, which means it gets closer and closer to one, this y value. It gets closer and closer to one. So it comes from this very, very large value, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, a little bit closer, until it gets to 1. Once it goes past 90 degrees, or pi over 2, it's moving away from 1 and getting back to these very, very large values. So that's why, and I'm going to change colors for us, that's why the cosecant function looks like these u's. And they hit this asymptote and then travel up along the asymptote, of course not crossing it because there are no points at the asymptote. And you'll find if we analyze this for more in a different, some more in a different quadrant, we'll get this this U over here that's upside down. Okay, and then we would get another one as this sine curve gets extended. We would get another one over here, and another asymptote, and we'd get another one over here. So that's kind of why an easy explanation why the cosecant curve looks sort of like this. We get this bump. We get this bump. We get this bump, we get this bump, we get this bump, and we have these asymptotes in between. And of course, there's one over here as well. Now, here's kind of the key to plotting a cosecant function. Me personally, I'd plot the sine function and then just draw the cosine, cosecant function off of it. But if you wanted to, you need to locate the asymptotes and then find these values. These values will change as your function changes but these change with shift, right or left shift, or vertical amplitude change, or vertical shift. But you can sort that out. I don't think we get in that much detail. So that's the cosecant function. And the secant function works the exact same way, except we're talking about secant and cosine. So let's quick, quickly do it, since it's the, pretty much the same situation here, except it's shifted 90 degrees, or pi over 2, just like cosine's relationship with sine. So again, recall that cosine looks like this. Okay? This is occurring at 2 pi. This is at pi. This trough is at pi. And they cross the zero, the midline at pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. And of course, zero is equal to 1 for the cosine function. Now, in the same way, since secant of some angle measure is the reciprocal of cosine, we get the same thing happening. So I'm going to do the cosecant function in lime green. When this is 0, I get the reciprocal of 0, which is undefined. So again, where cosine is 0, just like when sine was 0 for cosecant, I get asymptotes. Okay, And so no points are graphed on those vertical lines. Then once I get to these values of 1 or negative 1, I just get the reciprocal of negative 1, which is still negative 1, and the reciprocal of 1, which is still 1. OK? And so I get what happens is if I analyze, the, again, the unit circle as we travel around it, I'm going to get these u shapes for the cosecant function. There's an asymptote over here somewhere. 
and there's an asymptote over here somewhere. Okay, so that's the cosecant and secant functions. Tangent and cotangent are a little bit different, and so we're going to do that in a separate video. Hope that helps. I probably, yeah, I hope that helps. Thanks. Bye.